Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We've got another fun Raspberry Pi case from Retroflag to check out. This one is for the Raspberry Pi 4, and as you can see, it looks like a little mini PlayStation. And they also have a version that comes with a display, so you can take your retro gaming on the go if you want. And we're going to take a closer look at this case and its display in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this case is all about. Now, the price point on this is $30 for the case. And then if you want the case and the display, it'll run you about $90. And there's definitely a price premium for buying the version with the display. The display looks pretty nice, but it's not very large. It's only 4.3 inches. It's running at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio at an 800 by 480 resolution. When not in use, it'll uh, close down on top of the unit here. So you have a nice way to protect the display while it's in transit. And there's also some pretty loud stereo speakers here on the front. I'll show you some other features of the display as we work our way further into the review. What I'm going to do now, though, is just detach the display just to show you what the case looks like. And then again, we'll come back to that a little bit later. One thing that I really love about Retroflag is that they make these incredibly well-detailed Raspberry Pi cases. And they've been doing it now for a number of years. Uh, we looked at this one most recently where you've got a little cartridge that can hold a hard drive for storing your games and whatnot. Um, so these are just really cool. They're really well constructed. It feels like something that Nintendo, Sega, or Sony would have put together. It really feels very high quality and very nicely detailed. Uh, this one, of course, mirrors the PlayStation 1 in its design, and it only works with the Raspberry Pi 4. So you do need the latest Raspberry Pi for uh, compatibility here. But the Pi 4 is a great emulation device, and its sweet spot, I think, really is the uh, old PlayStation games from the original PlayStation era. And you have some functional buttons here on the front. This one on the far right will open up its lid, and you can store your SD cards in here if you want. There's also some vents for the CPU of the Raspberry Pi, and that CPU sits just underneath the vents here. This case, though, does not come with a fan. Some of their other ones do. Um, so if you have a fan, there is room for it in here. And I do recommend getting a heat sink or something for your Pi CPU, just because when this is closed, it will kind of contain the airflow a bit. So it would have been nice to see a fan included, especially with the premium price of it with the display. Over here, you have a power button and a reset button. There is a script available on GitHub, and you can find instructions on the RetroFlag website. Because when you install that script, when you push the power button, it doesn't just kill power to it. It actually shuts it down properly. And likewise, the reset button here will execute a different script that will reboot the Raspberry Pi properly also. And I would highly recommend getting that installed when you get going. Even with uh, the RetroPie installation, this will work really well. And I've got it running on mine right now. Uh, on the front here, you've got a pair of USB ports for plugging in controllers. When you install the Raspberry Pi, which is something we did on a live stream the other day, uh, there's a little extension cable that comes out of these ports that you plug into your Raspberry Pi as you're installing it. And there's a second cable that connects to the GPIO pins on the Pi to get all the other components hooked up. And that's all you got to do. It's a really simple installation process to get going with this one. On the side here, you've got a little door that you can open up, if I can get it out of here easily. And underneath this door is the uh, Ethernet uh, port and another USB port. Uh, so you can see your USB 3 ports are accessible here along with your gigabit Ethernet. It's a little hard to get your Ethernet plugged into this, so you might need a cable that has a little less molding around it. But if you want to connect it up to Ethernet or connect external storage, you can do that on the side. On the back, you basically have your ports from your Raspberry Pi uh, directly connected here to the case. So our USB-C power input is here. You've got your dual micro HDMI outputs for display, and then your audio output is here. And the display will attach up here. Now note, when I do plug the display in, uh, what it's going to do is cover up those HDMI ports. And what you'll get on the other end here is a full-size HDMI. However, when you have your external display attached to this, the internal display shuts off. So you can't run both at the same time. 
and unfortunately this covers up the second HDMI port so you can't get dual display output with this when the display is attached. Uh, your pass-through power goes in here so the display is powered uh, through the USB-C connector that you're using to power the Pi itself. So there's only a single power connection here. It might work with a battery if it can provide enough voltage. Uh, so if you have one of the newer fast charging batteries, you might be able to get this to work with that. And then of course your headphone jack is still accessible here. And of course you want to secure these two screws to get everything into place. On the bottom, you do have an easy access uh, to your SD card. So if you have multiple Raspberry Pi images that you're booting, you can very easily just slide those cards out and get going there. And of course you've got some nice rubber feet here on the bottom to keep everything secured. So that is the case in a nutshell. Uh, let me boot it up now though and show you what the display looks like. All right, so while the Raspberry Pi here is booting up, you can see just how small the text is. So this is not gonna be something well suited for doing any kind of general computing work just because it's so hard to see uh, what is on the screen. Uh, but once our Retro Pi uh, boots up here, we'll have a little bit more of a larger interface to play with. So I think it's definitely going to be limited uh, in its functionality, mostly to game playing only, but I think that's the whole point of the case here. You do have some controls on the front, so I can, for example, adjust the volume up on its stereo speakers. The speakers are quite loud. They're not audiophile quality, obviously, but they're good enough, I think, if you're playing games on the road. Uh, you also have a brightness control here, and it's pretty bright even uh, at the 80 percentile mark here. So I've been leaving it kind of in this range, and that seems to be working the best. In the middle here, you have a button to adjust its aspect ratio. So again, this is a 16 by 9 display, so it's a widescreen. And if you hit the button here, uh, you can put it into a 4 by 3 mode. But that, of course, will distort the image unless you have your Raspberry Pi set for a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. But my preference is to just leave the display settings on default. I think this is downgrading uh, from 1080p and just let the emulators kind of do the aspect ratio stuff for you. So I'm just going to jump into the uh, PlayStation here. Maybe we'll boot up this uh, old Star Wars game here called Rebel Assault 2. And this game actually was one of the first examples of live action Star Wars footage shot uh, since the Return of the Jedi movie was made in 1983. And they actually pioneered a few things like uh, shooting on virtual sets and whatnot that uh, later were used for the uh, prequels that came out a couple of years after this one. But as you can see, the display is super crisp on this. It really looks nice, uh, partly because it is small, so the lower resolution of the display really isn't all that noticeable. And let me just skip ahead here and just show you some of the cutscenes on this one. Um, but it looks good. I think it actually uh, might look a little sharper on this than it might on a, a larger display when you're close to it. And we can turn the speakers up here a little bit. Kind of tinny, um, but certainly very audible uh, as you're playing around with stuff. So altogether, I think it's going to work well, especially for retro emulation. It's been fun to kind of play some of these PlayStation games on here and uh, get some nostalgia for some games that I haven't played in a number of years now. And all in, I think it's a really uh, nice way to experience retro gaming if you are using a Raspberry Pi. So once again, Retroflag has put together another nice Raspberry Pi case, very nicely detailed here, very high quality, very easy to get your Pi installed and running. And of course, having that script is a really nice touch for safe shutdowns and reboots. Just some really nice stuff here, and I think very reasonably priced in its standalone version. If you're paying a little bit more for the display, I think you'll be pleased with how your games look on it, especially the retro games. I did play a bunch of PlayStation games on it over the last week or so, and it works pretty nicely for what it is. Just don't expect to do any general computing on this tiny little display. So this is definitely something I can recommend along with all the other retro flag cases I've looked at over the years. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Jim Tannis and Tom Albrecht, Hot Sauce and Video Games and Eric's Variety Channel, Brian Parker and Frank Goldman, Amda Brown and Matt Zagaya, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.